Venera 13 landed on Venus on March 1, 1982. The probe survived for 127 minutes before going silent, which was enough time to capture in color what appears to be a bizarre landscape dominated by flat, dark, layered rocks and fine grain-like soil material filling the gaps. Just four days later, Venera 14 successfully landed in a different region of Venus, allowing us to see even more of this hell. Venus, Earth's fiery twin, sits just 40 million kilometers closer to the sun, glowing as the morning star and evening star in our skies. Once wrapped in myths, Venus has been probed by Cold War missions and modern tech, revealing a world utterly unlike Earth, shrouded in thick clouds and blazing heat. At its closest, Venus is only 41 million kilometers away, shining so bright that even President Jimmy Carter once mistook it for a UFO. Through a telescope, its sharp crescent shape is unmistakable, so bright it steals the night sky after the moon. Yes, Venus does cross the sun, but it's a once-in-a-lifetime show. The last transit was in 2012, and the next won't happen until 2117. This rarity comes from Venus's tilted orbit and its odd rhythm, catching up with Earth every 584 days. But Venus isn't just rare, it's strange. It spins backwards, taking 243 Earth days for one rotation, slower than its own year of 224 days. At the equator, it crawls at just 6.5 kilometers per hour. Why? A massive ancient collision? Tidal forces? Still a mystery wrapped in its thick, deadly clouds. Venus has always stolen the spotlight, second only to the moon in brightness. But getting there was no easy feat. Between 1961 and 1967, 15 missions tried. Only three truly succeeded. Then, in 1970, the Soviet Venera 7 made history as the first probe to land on another world and send data back. As Venera plunged through the upper atmosphere, stretching 250 to 60 kilometers up, it found thin haze, traces of carbon dioxide, and wild temperature swings from minus 143 degrees Celsius to minus 37 degrees Celsius. A taste of the deadly world waiting below. Infrared images from Venus Express reveal glowing oxygen high above the planet. Around 60 kilometers down, Venera hit the thick yellow cloud deck, the source of Venus's eerie look. These clouds form when sunlight splits carbon dioxide, sparking reactions with sulfur dioxide and water to create deadly sulfuric acid rain, though it evaporates before reaching the ground. The clouds are blindingly reflective, bouncing back up to 90% of sunlight and making Venus shine as the second brightest object in our sky. Hidden beneath them, storms, acid, and lightning brew, a true hell cloaked in golden haze. Beneath Venus's golden clouds lies a greenhouse nightmare, its atmosphere is almost pure carbon dioxide, trapping so much heat that the whole planet glows in infrared. Winds scream at 100 meters per second, fast enough to race around the planet in just four days, while sulfuric acid rains down on any craft daring to enter. Closer to the surface, the pressure is 100 times Earth's, like a car crushing your thumb. And stranger still, carbon dioxide here becomes a supercritical fluid, a bizarre state between liquid and gas, a world both blazing and suffocating. On Venus, it feels like wading through fire, 464 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt lead. That's even hotter than Mercury, despite Venus getting only a quarter of Mercury's sunlight. The thick atmosphere locks in the heat, keeping nights and poles just as scorching. Yet Venus is eerily Earth-like in size. Its gravity is only slightly weaker than ours but its atmosphere tells a different story. Layers of blistering heat, sulfuric acid clouds, and eerie patterns revealed under infrared and ultraviolet light. A world that looks like Earth's twin, but burns like hell. Infrared scans of Venus show strange dark blotches. Something in the clouds absorbs ultraviolet light, but scientists still don't know what. Even stranger, at both poles, giant vortexes swirl the size of Europe each with not one eye, but two. These chaotic storms shift in less than 24 hours, baffling experts to this day. Past the acidic clouds, Venera finally reached the surface. The air turned out clearer than expected, but everything was bathed in dull yellow light. Beneath the crushing atmosphere lay rocky, lifeless ground, an alien wasteland. 
Venus's rocky plains hint at ancient lava flows, now scorched and eroded under its brutal atmosphere. The Venera probes that touched down survived only hours, crushed and baked, but left us haunting snapshots of a lifeless world. Still, those photos showed just tiny patches, leaving scientists desperate for more. The answer came with radar mapping. Pioneer Venus in the 1970s gave only blurry, incomplete images, like Google Maps stuck at max zoom. Later, the Soviets improved with Venera 15 and 16, but NASA wanted it all, every mountain, crater, and hidden detail beneath the toxic clouds. NASA's Magellan mission set out to reveal Venus in full detail, and it delivered. Using a massive 3.7-meter antenna and advanced synthetic aperture radar, Magellan pierced the dense clouds and mapped the planet strip by strip from polar orbit. Across six cycles, it charted nearly the entire surface with up to 250-meter resolution and even mapped Venus's gravity field, exposing secrets about its hidden interior. By the early 90s, Magellan had sent back 150 gigabytes of data, more than every NASA planetary mission before it combined. Magellan's radar revealed Venus like never before. Detailed mosaics showing a surface far younger than expected. Unlike the Moon or Mars, Venus has only about 940 craters. Most small meteors burn up in its dense atmosphere, and the ones that do hit leave strange marks. Crater ejecta here don't just scatter, they flow like lava shaped by heat and crushing air. Some even stretch for hundreds of kilometers, forming bizarre streaks and tails unique to Venus. The scarcity of craters hints at a violent past, a planet-wide resurfacing 300 to 500 million years ago, fueled by massive volcanic eruptions. Magellan showed us a volcanic world. 85% of Venus is blanketed in lava flows. Vast pancake domes, some 65 kilometers wide, formed from thick lava that cracked and collapsed as it cooled. Shield volcanoes like Mott Mons rise nearly 8,000 meters, rivaling Everest, while smaller domes dot the landscape, built from lava too thick to travel far. These overlapping flows reveal a violent past and maybe even an active present. In fact, re-examined Magellan data showed two volcanoes erupting in the early 1990s. Proof Venus may still be alive with fire today. Fresh analysis confirmed eruptions at Mott Mons in 1991. Proof Venus is still geologically alive. But what's happening beneath the surface? The answer may lie in giant corona, massive circular scars like Vin Corona, stretching 500 kilometers wide. These form when hot mantle plumes push upward, then collapse as magma cools. Unlike Earth, Venus has no shifting plates. Instead, its crust deforms in place, warped by forces below. This stagnant lid world can't recycle carbon like Earth does, possibly fueling the runaway greenhouse that turned Venus into a furnace. On Earth, subduction recycles carbon and regulates climate, but Venus has no such relief. With its stagnant crust, heat and greenhouse gases build up until the entire surface overturns in catastrophic resurfacing events. Magellan data suggests the last one struck about 300 million years ago. Adding to the mystery are tesserae, tile-like highland terrains covering 8% of Venus, some date back 750 million years, making them the planet's oldest features. Likely volcanic or continental crust, twisted by colossal forces, they may hold secrets of Venus's ancient climate. And Magellan even spotted signs of active tectonics in Aphrodite Terra. Magellan's radar even caught changes on Venus's surface, like a fresh bright flow, likely a landslide sparked by a Venus quake. After four years of groundbreaking discoveries, the probe made its fiery dive into the atmosphere in 1994, sending back data until the crushing heat silenced it forever. But Venus's mysteries are far from solved. In 2020, astronomers thought they'd found phosphine gas, possibly a sign of life in its toxic skies. The claim made headlines, but later studies cast doubt, and by 2022, NASA dismissed it. Still, the question lingers. Could something survive there? Just when it seemed the phosphine debate was over, Professor Jane Greaves reignited it in 2023, claiming the JCMT telescope had detected the gas again, this time deeper in Venus's atmosphere. Could this really hint at life in such a hostile world? Future missions may finally give us answers. Bigger questions remain. Why did Venus and Earth, so alike in size, 
take such different paths? Did Venus once have oceans? What secrets hide in its atmosphere and crust? With NASA's upcoming Veritas and Da Vinci missions, the spotlight is back on our fiery twin. Could Venus have once been habitable? Is it still volcanically alive today? NASA hopes to find out with two bold missions, Da Vinci Plus and Veritas, set for the late 2020s. Da Vinci Plus will dive straight into the atmosphere, sampling gases and snapping images during its hour-long plunge before being crushed on the surface. Meanwhile, Veritas will orbit for three years, hunting signs of active volcanism and mapping Venus's crust in stunning detail. But there's a catch. Both face cancellation under proposed budget cuts. If they survive, they could finally reveal just how much Venus mirrors or defies Earth. With the dawn of these new missions, scientists are eager to peer deeper into Venus's mysteries than ever before. The hope is that high-resolution imaging, advanced radar, and direct atmospheric sampling will finally give us the missing puzzle pieces that Magellan and the Venera probes couldn't provide. Venus is a world where everything feels extreme, its toxic atmosphere, its crushing pressure, and its blistering heat. Yet the possibility that water may have once flowed there refuses to fade away. Clues hidden in the tesserae and corona formations suggest that Venus's crust might preserve relics of a wetter, more Earth-like past. Some scientists argue that billions of years ago, Venus could have had oceans as deep as Earth's, only to lose them in a runaway greenhouse catastrophe that boiled the water away and filled the skies with thick carbon dioxide. Others argue it may never have had liquid oceans at all, instead remaining a hot, dry wasteland from the very start. That question, whether Venus was once a blue world, may be the key to understanding not only Venus's past, but Earth's future. As our sun grows brighter with age, Earth could face its own runaway greenhouse effect in the distant future. By studying Venus, we're not just peering into another world's history, we're glimpsing a possible mirror of our own destiny. The irony is chilling. Our twin planet, so similar in size and mass, became utterly hostile while Earth flourished. Why? That remains one of planetary science's most tantalizing mysteries. Another reason Venus has captured so much attention lately is its relevance to the search for life elsewhere. While Venus itself may seem uninhabitable on the surface, the mystery of phosphine and other unusual atmospheric chemicals has reignited debates. Could microbial life exist high in Venus's clouds, where temperatures and pressures are far more forgiving than at the surface? At altitudes of 50 to 60 kilometers, conditions are surprisingly close to those on Earth. Temperatures range between 25 and 75 degrees Celsius, and pressures are similar to sea level. It's a harsh environment, filled with sulfuric acid, but not beyond the realm of speculation. For decades, scientists dismissed Venus as a dead end for astrobiology. But the renewed focus on its skies has raised the bold possibility that life, tiny, hardy microbes, could be clinging on in acidic droplets. The evidence is far from confirmed, and the phosphine detection remains controversial, yet it has shifted the conversation. Venus may no longer be seen as just a planetary cautionary tale of runaway climate, but as a place where life might have once found a way in the unlikeliest of conditions. This possibility makes future atmospheric probes especially important. If Da Vinci Plus or other planned missions can scoop up samples and analyze them in real time, the implications would be staggering. Finding even trace evidence of life or of chemical processes that mimic life would reshape our understanding of habitability in the universe. Venus, once written off as a planet of death, could instead prove to be one of the most surprising worlds in the solar system. But Venus is not just about the past or the possibility of life. Its violent geology is another enigma still waiting to be solved. Magellan showed us a surface dominated by volcanoes, rift valleys, and massive lava plains, but is that activity still ongoing today? Recent reanalysis of radar data suggests it might be. The discovery of two erupting volcanoes in the early 1990s has strengthened the case that Venus is not dormant but still very much alive beneath its suffocating atmosphere. If that's true, Venus becomes one of the few worlds in the solar system where we can study active volcanism firsthand, alongside Earth and Jupiter's moon Io. This could be a game-changer for planetary science. Active volcanoes would mean fresh heat from the planet's mantle is still shaping the surface, releasing gases, and possibly even influencing atmospheric chemistry in real time. 
It would also suggest that Venus's so-called stagnant lid tectonics are more dynamic than once thought, with plumes and mantle flows forcing eruptions through weak points in the crust. Future radar missions, like Veritas, aim to settle this debate. By measuring subtle changes in the terrain and mapping hot spots of heat, they could catch Venus in the act of reshaping itself. If confirmed, it would transform Venus from a fossilized wasteland into a living, breathing world, still hostile, still dangerous, but undeniably active, a world that once again proves it cannot be underestimated. And so, the story of Venus comes full circle, once seen through myths as the goddess of love, then later dismissed as a burning wasteland. Venus is reclaiming its place as one of the most important worlds for science to explore. From the failed Soviet probes crushed in its atmosphere, to Magellan's radar unveiling its surface, to the tantalizing hints of active volcanoes and mysterious chemicals in the clouds, Venus has remained elusive, defiant, and endlessly fascinating. The next decade promises to change everything. With Veritas, Da Vinci Plus, and other international missions like ESA's Envision and India's Shukrayan One, we may finally pull back the veil on this enigmatic twin. Will we discover that Venus once had oceans? Will we confirm that volcanoes still rage beneath its clouds? Or could we find evidence, however faint, that life clings to survival in its skies? These questions are not just about Venus. They're about us too. They're about Earth's future about the boundaries of habitability, and about how fragile planetary climates really are. Venus warns us of what can happen when a planet turns against itself. But it also tempts us with mysteries too great to ignore. One thing is certain, Venus, our sister world, still holds secrets waiting to be revealed. And when those answers come, they might just rewrite everything we thought we knew about planets, life, and our place in the universe. Even if NASA's plans stall, other nations are stepping in. ESA, Russia, China, India, and even a bold private mission called Venus Life Finder all aim to pierce the planet's veil. One of them, or perhaps all, could finally unlock the secrets of the morning star and evening star, our fiery twin. Through radar, infrared, and ultraviolet eyes, we've seen volcanoes, craters, and chemical clues hidden beneath Venus's clouds. We've glimpsed why this planet burned so fiercely, and whether life, against all odds, could ever survive there. If you enjoyed this journey through Venus, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and drop a comment below. Tell us what mystery about Venus fascinates you the most.